We're going to get the other videos ready this weekend for next week. And I'll tell you what, three videos next week. It's ambitious, I know. We'll see if we can pull it off. But uh, our women government spies, unironically, they're not government spies because governments have agencies, literally. Women don't have agency. So the point of the all women are fed video wasn't to say that they're literally federal agents, though many of them are. It's just that in these political circles, um, you might notice a trend. Hold on. What are we listening to here? Hmm. Oh, you can't go wrong. You know, damn, it's the only Blink-182 song that is mainstream that doesn't age poorly. Um, hold on. What were we going to talk? Oh, women being feds. Yeah, Nuance Bro says they don't have to be feds to turn on you like one. That's like really what the point is. It's like they're, they're feds in the sense that in these political circles, you really can't trust them. You know, there are a lot of, and this is with a lot of like the, you know, uh, trad cast AF types. They don't like this take, but it's true nonetheless that there are a lot of women who do very good work in uh, non- camera related politics right like there are a lot of like even on my bookshelf right now some of the best political books i've ever read were authored by women um even some of the most popular figureheads you know michelle malkin and coulter these people are like very good at what they do it's this new trend that we see with the emergence of the internet and the concept of like the e-celeb the influencer that gets into very dangerous waters because it allows for young women whose priority is attention to infiltrate these niche markets and they say the you know they put on the maga hat or they put on the af hat and they've got you know the low cut shirts and whatever and they're like look at me i'm like based in red pill it used to be i want to make america great again now it's i'm based in red pill and then these guys who claim to be these real stoic guys never e girls they simp they always turn every time i they're breaking my heart the most chad guys i know who are these like micro celebrities on the internet all of a sudden, they're reposting these women on their stories. Go follow her. Go follow her. And it's like, all right. All right. In, in a way, that's the same thing as like, you know, some of these grifter types who are more explicitly neocons, right? It's like they, they read the room. They look at what the popular points are, what people are saying, and they think it's a game. They literally think it's a game. Ha ha. Oh, yeah. Based in red pill. Ha ha. Never e-girls. But the second... It comes their way, the chips are down, they always capitulate. They're grifting in a different way, but it's true. So the point of that video was basically gonna be like, you know, as people operating in political circles, you have to understand that a lot of people are gonna wanna occupy them simply to get attention and redirect productive conversation resources to literally just aggrandizing themselves for no purpose other than external va uh, validation. You see this with men a lot too. These are the DC types. Should I name this kid? No, I won't. Man, this kid I went to high school with, he was the guy. You know, he'd wear the suit and tie to school, and every six months or something, he posts a picture of himself on Instagram. You know, hey, hey, everyone, let me just update you. You know, it's a picture of him and some irrelevant state representative, you know, because he wants to look. He wants to be the politician. That's the way it manifests with the guy, which is arguably worse. But with girls, it's, you know, it's always the, <laughs> I'm based. <laughs> I want to, like, stay at home. I'm based. Makes me very angry all the time. So that was a recent thing because you notice they start hanging around the circles. All of a sudden they want to make their own content, right? All of a sudden they want to be the ones talking, which is fine. But you have to question their priority because if I weren't making YouTube videos... I'd be writing articles. I'd be phone banking. I've phone banked before. I'd be, I don't know. I would be doing something. I don't care about being on YouTube or whatever. I just like know how to edit videos, I guess. And I thought I'd be good at it, but I'm not really concerned about like being on camera. A lot of these people, that's all they care about. And you can tell because they post selfies. They, <laughs> this quirky thing happened to me today, right? It's all about attention. Very cringe. We don't have time for that anymore. We don't have time to play those games anymore. We just don't. 
I wish we did, but we don't. Hmm. I forgot where I was going with that. It was going somewhere. Yep, I forgot. We lost it. That's all right. Anyways, instead of denying your white privilege, affirm it. So true. So true. Anyways, we will continue the Chick-fil-A lunch break. We will continue the fan engagement. Um, let's see. Who's in the chat? Who could we go live with? Uh, why aren't you a guest on Crowder? I've never been invited. So that, that's why primarily. John's new video. Why the Joker is based. I did two videos about that when that movie was coming out. Was the French Revolution a mistake? Yes. John is very smart. So true. Uh, are you going to the anti-vaccine protest in Springfield? No. I don't have a car that I want to drive that far. Yo, I'm working at Chick-fil-A right now. Let's go. Let's go. Thoughts on Jordan Peterson? I like Jordan Peterson. John, where's the Minecraft video release you promised? It was on my Twitter, and then they nuked my Twitter. Uh, please debate Hassan Piker. I don't know if he'd debate me. And that guy, too. It's funny because, you know, I really want to, like, get YouTube boxing into political YouTube. Um, and I, I would really like to fight that guy. And the thing is, he's, like, the most Chad, so to speak, leftist. And he has to be because he's the one who's not, like, explicitly disgusting or ugly. <laughs> Excuse me. Gamer moment. But you can still see in the way that he carries himself, that he's a very feminine man, uh, in the way that he dresses, in the way that he gets very emotional about things. And when you fight someone like that, like I'm, I haven't been in like, you know, a ton of fights in my life, but when you fight someone like that, or when you watch like Antifa, the way that they attack people, it's all very emotional, right? Like it's all this kind of like rage that's almost exfoliating through their, their physical motions. Like, you know, just very uncalculated, just kind of lashing out. And I think it would be very interesting to fight somebody like that in front of an audience, you know, like look at Floyd Mayweather's face or Conor McGregor's face when they're fighting somebody. They are very stoic, right? They have very straight face because they're calculating. They're watching to see where their next move is. They're not going at it out of anger. If you fought somebody like that in front of an audience for charity or whatever, uh, mainly to demoralize them when we beat the shit out of them, but that's beside the point, they would be like lashing out, right? They'd be angry. I want to bash the fash or whatever. I think it would be a very interesting contrast to see um, I'd rather see John debate a neocon than a commie. So true. So true. <sighs> Are right-wing militias controlled opposition? Um, nominally, no, but most of them are infiltrated by feds. So probably de facto, yes, but I think that the people who start them have good intentions, even though they're, they're basically ineffective and, and like boomer run. Uh, should we end women's suffrage? Yes. Uh, political TikTok talkers are doing a boxing match sometime soon. I think that was my idea. If you're talking about the Republican hype house, Kai clips in chat, white pilled yet again. Uh, thoughts on PJW? I like him. Uh, so true, so true, Kai, the the enthusiasm backbone of the live chat. Why are there so many neocons? in the chat are there there shouldn't be you know someone sent me an email the other day and they're like you know what john i really like you even though you're a neocon and i was like what how could you ever watch me and think i'm a neocon and people are so stupid and uneducated about politics because like i did that video where i took the political compass test and i ended up in the blue which is authoritarian right which i am and uh, people are so stupid and they have such a sophomoric perception of politics that they're like, oh, that's where neocons are. And conservatives are supposed to be in the purple and like the, you know, uh, libertarian right. That's and it's like 
you just don't understand. You just don't get it. Like, you think that I, I don't know the things you know and then know why they're wrong. Like, my brain contains your brain, okay? Like, you're just incorrect. I don't get it. Um, how do we take our country back? Force. That's literally what it's going to come down to. I'm not talking about, like, you know, some big uprising. Patriots in control. And we Because we, no one knows what to do. Like... Let's say, hypothetically, you had every gun owner in the country, not even just the ones in militias, every gun owner in the country all of a sudden rose up and took power in the sense that now they're like just sitting in the desks and all the state capitals, you know, federal buildings, whatever. They would have no idea what to do. It would actually almost be worse in a way. They would try to like... implement this very small government type of infrastructure that would basically accelerate the collapse of our country because of how divided and destabilized we are. Well, actually, wait a minute, that might be a good thing. And then they leave, and then me and all my friends come in, and then, and then we take over. I don't know. They're just hypotheticals. We're just exploring hypotheticals. Uh, remember that guy, actual Jake, trying to rationalize porn addiction? What a bum. Yeah. Yeah, insult me without looking like a troll challenge. Difficulty impossible. I've never been insulted by somebody who doesn't just look ugly. Which, you know, there's this sort of like Ben Shapiro level assessments of, you know, political exchange. Where, oh, insults? <laughs> you only insult when you run out of things to say. I'm smarter than you. It's like, I'm not insulting you like, you know, you are ugly, therefore you are incorrect. That's not my point. You know, they say you are racist, therefore you are incorrect. You're a jerk. Hey, my guy, you did a heckin' racism. That's, that's not an actual argument. But when I look at these people and I'm like, you're like really ugly. I'm not saying you're ugly, therefore you're incorrect. It's like, you know, you argue with these people and they jump around so much and they ignore the facts and they ignore the rationality. So at a certain point, you have to just throw that out the window and think, why are you so committed? Why are you so passionately arguing in favor of these depraved things? What happened to you? Why are you ugly? Is the fact that you are habitually and compulsively predisposed towards pornography consumption, is that related to the fact that you are morbidly and grotesquely obese? Could that both be tied, uh, could both of those things be tied to your low impulse control? Maybe your lack of self-confidence, your, your depression, you need the dopamine fix from sugars and from, and from cooming. Like, are these things related? You really do have to kind of take it to that level. So... Yeah, no, that guy's disgusting. And that's why. That's literally why, too. You know, you never see well-groomed, good-looking people criticizing things. You know, they might disagree with free market economics or whatever, but you'll never see somebody like that criticizing, I'm sorry, affirming a socially conservative position because they're all possessed by demons. Uh, John, when are you going on Michael Moles' show? I don't know. I mean, he's, he's a nice guy. Uh... I don't know if I call him a friend of mine. I don't. I don't know him that well, but I'd say like maybe an associate. Um, but no, we spoke at uh, SAS. He watches the content. He's a fan. Uh, he followed me on Twitter before I got banned. So, um, yeah, let's. We will see. I guess I have actually a collab that I want to do with him. I, I wrote a script for a sketch that I think would go uh, as viral as political and right wing content could go on YouTube. I think it would do very well. So we will see. Uh, John went to neocon summer camp as a boy. You are, you are the degenerate I was just, I was just making, making fun of, Sean. Tying women up, using handcuffs, and just, and all this weird stuff. Uh, John, how do you feel about rap? Eh. Wait, you're off, right? See, this is what I'm talking about. If you have an education in politics that transcends high school and, and, libertarian Instagram meme accounts, you would understand that, yes, I am authright. Everybody in this country at its, at its peak was authright. But this confuses you. This alarms you. But wait a minute. The founding fathers wanted us to be small government. Well, how can that be? No. No, they actually didn't. 
You've been sold that idea because if you are sold that idea by people who are allowed to sell you that idea, then you get turned into this pacified, ineffective thing, bug man, right? That's why through the latter half of the 20th century and in the 2000s, all the most prominent voices in the rights were those people because they're ineffective, they're spineless, and they're toothless. And now you're scratching your head like, wait a minute, we just, we just didn't do it right. It's like, no, that was by design. They literally purged all of the people who think like me from the conservative movement throughout the 1950s and 60s and 70s. I would eat, and throughout the entire latter half of the 20th century, actually, and you can look into this, it's been suppressed, but you can find it. You can find the authors. They write about this extensively. You can look at the history of these publications. They purged people because they were not conservatives. They were neoliberals and neoconservatives, which are just liberals. And so they purged out authentically conservative people, and they were allowed to do so. Why do you think it is that these conservatives complain about censorship and big tech, and then all of a sudden it's like, you're accessing this information on facebook.com, right? Like what, maybe it didn't do as well in the Facebook algorithms as, as something from the Young Turks or something from Vice, maybe, but you're still allowed to access that information. Why is that? Because it's not actually a threat to the establishment. I mean, these people make careers out of saying, men are not women. Like, d oh my gosh, the CIA just disbanded. They disbanded Ben Shapiro. How do you do it? No, it's not actually a threat to the, the established order of things. And that idea... And that idea gets into your head and you're like, wait a minute, the best way for us to combat the left is by wanting to make it and they've never worked. It is, it is literally the right wing equivalent of progressivism and of communism. It is, it is no different principally because it assumes the perfectibility of the individual. It is equal. It is equal. It assumes that on the one hand with progressivism, Oh, if everybody just let each other be happy and everyone could just be doing what they want, let people live and enjoy things. And, on the, and, you know, we can all have the big block party and there's different booths set up and each booth has the Haitian food and the Ecuadorian food and then uh, uh, the El Salvadorian music. And that's that's literally that's their utopia. And on the right, it's the same thing. But the block party is this booth has a Gadsden flag and this booth is 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 playing Metallica or whatever. It's the same thing of like. Oh, if everybody just agreed to maintain small government, if everybody just agreed to let people teach their kids how to masturbate in kindergarten, we would have the perfect society. That's not how power works. That's not how people work. It's not that simple. We're going to address a lot of this in a video in a couple weeks titled The Top 5 Stupidest Baby Boomer Talking Points. But no, libertarianism and progressivism are both liberal ideas. This is true. This is true. And if you don't know that, or if you don't understand that, it's because you're just not educated. And that's not to say, like, you need to go get educated at, at an Ivy League school and learn about gender theory. Like, literally, you don't understand the post-enlightenment evolving of politics, which is fine. I'm autistic, and I get paid to understand that, so I'm not berating you for not understanding that. But it's like, you can't kind of get locked into this mindset of just like, wait a minute. You're saying you're authoritarian, right? Well, that's bad. No, it's actually not. You've been conditioned to think that that's bad because when this country was at its most prosperous and its most free and its most moral, that's where the politics was, right? My opinions on things may be off-putting, they may be extreme, but they are probably 10% less extreme than the average opinion of the American man in the 1950s pertaining to religion, women, whatever, homosexuals. Anyways, we continue. We, we will now get into our fourth and last chicken strip from Chick-fil-A. As we continue, John does not miss. I literally, I've only missed once. I missed once um, back when coronavirus first happened. I missed. But since then, I haven't missed. This is the Twitter thread. <laughs> So true. Um, what's better, democracy, oligarchy, or monarchy? Probably monarchy. Uh, what's to stop them wielding that off power against us then? They already are. That's the point. And that's always the argument. 
if we exercise power and that power then exists, what's to stop them from, what's to stop it from being wielded against us? And I'll say this on Instagram. I'm not quite ready to say this on YouTube yet, but I'll say this on Instagram, right? How do you coexist in a society with people who want to kill you so that they can teach children how to have sex with adults and inanimate objects and anime body pillows? How do you coexist with people like that? You just don't, frankly. This is not an argument for taking away human rights or doing anything like that. This is simply to say that the Constitution of the United States of America is the framework from which we operate. It is not up for debate. These are our God-given rights, right? We all, I think, agree on that. That's the starting point. From there, we embark on this, this grand American experience, right? The point being that in order for a document like the Constitution, which I would argue, and I think we would all agree, is, is one of the most important and, and greatest legal documents ever written, I think that that basically implies that in order for its own preservation, you cannot allow for ideas such as, I don't know, the abandonment of the Constitution to survive. Because if you do that, then the Constitution itself is obsolete, right? So you can say, they have a constitutional right to call and run for office on platforms that want to destroy the Constitution. That doesn't make any sense. It's like in the movie, right? If the rule you followed got you here, of what utility was the rule? I think that's, that's a paraphrase, but that's like basically what we're saying. In other words, I want to go back to the 1950s when communism was effectively illegal. Uh, we would bar communists from holding positions of influence in academia and media. I basically want like the Red Scare 2.0 because if you don't have that, you're going to lose. So what's to stop them from using the power against us? Great question. When we have the power, we make it illegal for them to get the power. It really is that simple. And this makes us anxious. Oh, but isn't that what they're doing? Yeah, and that's why they're winning. You're telling me that you would be worse off? Explain to me how your life day to day is going to be worse and less free if communists stop being in the media, in the universities, in business. Explain to me how your life would get worse. I would actually argue that it would probably get better. It would probably be a lot better if you could watch TV without having to worry about the commercials. Mommy, mommy, I'm a girl now without your kids running home. Mommy, mommy, I'm a boy now. Things like that. It would be so much better. And you have to do that because these people, as we talk about extensively on the channel, are spiritually ill. They have to rationalize their own demons onto the society as a whole to cope with that internalized trauma and guilt. It is not enough for them to be private individuals in the privacy of their own home because they know that what they're doing is fucking gay. And so they need everybody else to be like, nope, that's normal to affirm that identity. Especially adding on to that, that as a country, as a people, we have been stripped of our national identity. We have been stripped of our religious identity, our ethnic identity, anything to which we could gravitate and attach. Like, yes, this is us. That's gone. So now the identity comes from the ones that are approved, be that the sexual identities, the sort of um, identities uh, in tandem to these religious and so or not religious. Well, they effectively are religious, but these social movements, that's where people get their identities from. So, yes, authoritarian right wing government is based. There's a shirt coming out when merch comes out that says, will trade sister for competent right-wing government. It's so true. I would trade not my, I would trade my half sister for that. I don't really like her too much, but that's like the only answer. You're never going to fix this country or take this country back with a small government mindset that wants everybody to live and let live. If you want to take this country back, uh, if I were, yeah, okay, I'd walk into the Oval Office at 9 a.m. Let's say, hypothetically, we've got a solidified right-wing government like Trump had his first term, except for the first two years, except this time, it's actually filled with people who are allied with us instead of neocons and subverters. There are a few things that have to be done, uh, and you could basically get the country on the right track in an afternoon. You would secure the southern border, you would militarize it, um, you would probably start to organize for the mass deportation of illegal aliens, which has been done before uh, in, in the, the first half of the 19th cent or 20th century in particular. There are presidents who got like tens of millions of these people out. So you have to get them out because if not, when the Democrats take power again, like they're tr trying to do right now, they're going to amnesty these people. They're going to give them voting rights and then you're done. You're never going to win an election again. Not that we are anyways because they stole the last election, but who knows? Uh, so you have to do that. You're going to need to get mandatory e-verify on a national level. You're going to need to cut all 
and oh, they just fucking passed that in the House or in the Senate too now. So now all the Afghan refugees, refugees who are coming over. Remember in 2015 when it was cool to be against refugees, when it was cool and edgy to say refugees coming from Muslim, Islam is the greatest threat to Western civilization. Now the mainstream right wing publications are making articles like, oh, we're actually owning Joe Biden because he caused this problem and we're going to clean up the mess. Do you know what, okay, never mind. The point being, now these people are going to be getting welfare and they're going to be getting free housing and food and everything on your tax dollar. There's no cap to the intake of them, no cap to the amount of benefits they, that they can receive. You need to cut all of that out, take that money and reallocate it towards repatriation and depatriation funds, literally paying these people to leave. Go away, go back to the country you came from, go back to any country that will take you. As long as you're not here, we could literally give them a $50,000 cash voucher and it would actually save us money in the long run because I think the stat is that the average illegal alien in this country will consume about $100,000 on the taxpayer's dole, right? So you could literally save money and it's not socialism, it's survival, okay? Taking $50,000 and throwing it, just go away, just go, just go, bye, bye. We don't need you. We built this country without the great, the great Afghan renaissance, right? We didn't build this country with the great Somalian renaissance. No, we built it with the American spirit. We don't need these people. They don't like us. They don't wave our flag. They take us for granted. They exploit the, the misguided altruism of the Western the Western citizens. So yeah, you have to get those people out. Uh, and then you have to make communism illegal. <laughs> you have to like literally purge them from all positions in the media and academia. Not liberals, by the way. We love our liberals. They can stay. They can stay. They can cry about, oh, we need welfare. We need all the old issues. You know what? I actually get nostalgic for it. I, I get nostalgic for a good old liberal versus conservative debate. But in terms of like the communists, the leftists, those people need to be purged from not, I don't want to say purged, not violently, okay? None of that. If you think it needs to be violent, I'm gonna pee, I'm gonna vomit. Are you are you kidding me? Using political vi What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? That's disgusting. That's bad. Why would you ever do that? Are you kidding me? No. That's not what we mean, okay? That's not what we mean. <laughs> it's not. I just got a notification from my Bible app, the verse of the day, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith. So true. I'm just saying these people should not be allowed to hold any influence. Why should they? Think about it. If you are holding influence in media or in academia, any institution that receives public dollars at the very least, I would personally extend it to any institution that you have influence. If you are going to utilize that influence to promote policies and ideas that we know, that we know are detrimental to the well-being of the American family and the American society as a whole, a serious country would not allow you to do that. Do you want to know why China's winning right now? Do you want to know why Russia is a more serious country than we are? Why don't you waltz on over to China, try to get a job in a Chinese university promoting the idea that the Chinese people are genetically stupid, right? That they're just the worst. They're evil. That China is built on ideas that are not nice. You would get laughed out of there and they'd probably kill you, honestly. You would be laughed out. They wouldn't even entertain the idea. It's not even, po it is literally not even possible. It is not possible. <clears throat> Gamer moment. So if we want to be a serious country, we have to be a serious people. And uh, the, like, everything that we've just monologued about in the last 10 minutes or so, a lot of people in this country really just aren't ready to accept, which is fine. But nonetheless, these are the things that have to be done. And I really just don't have the patience to argue with these people anymore. I just don't. Whether it's the boomers, whether it's the libertarians, if everything goes the way it should and we take power in this country and we will fix the country in a matter of two generations and these people will never thank us because they won't quite understand why because they're still going to be, you know, fantasizing about, you know, oh, I want gay people to defend their weed plants with AR-15s. That's fine. That's fine. We don't need everybody to agree. But nonetheless, these are the things that have to be done. You need to secure the border. You need to repatriate and depatriate all of the people who are not supposed to be here. And you need to crush the ability 
of communists to subvert and destroy the nation. This is not controversial, and it should never have been controversial. If the founding fathers were still alive, they'd be calling for a lot worse than what I'm calling for now. If they were brought back all of a sudden, they'd be pretty angry that we messed things up so badly. They'd be calling for a lot worse, simply out of spite, out of anger. They'd probably be calling us our current government, too. Well, easily our current government. But they would not be happy. They would not be happy one bit. So anyways, we continue. We continue. Um, when the boomers are gone, we're stuck with millennials and immigrants. Appreciate them now. No, that's true. I was actually talking about that with a buddy of mine yesterday. We take the boomers for granted because yes, they don't quite get it. But you know, when the mass boomer die out happens over the course of the next 15 years or so, it's really going to hurt us electorally. And also in terms of the general competence of the country, like boomers are the last generation. I mean, Gen Xers are pretty good, but boomers are the last generation who really understood like what it meant to be like an American. And that's the problem is they, they and their parents, too, frankly, were too busy uh, riding this wave of post-World War II prosperity that they didn't maintain uh, the necessary structures in the country for something like that to propagate. They, as I say in the videos, you know, they were too busy getting high and listening to Led Zeppelin IV to actually keep the country uh, intact, right? So I, I lament the fact that they were so ineffective and apathetic, but at the same time, you know, that which defines the boomer because I know like 25-year-old boomers, I do. I would argue that all libertarians are basically like spiritual boomers. Um, that which defines the boomer is simply the inability to understand that things have changed, right? So on the one hand, that's bad because boomers don't really understand what a tangible and effective right-wing political strategy is. But on the other hand, you're never going to sell a boomer generally on things like, you know, gender theory because they just don't get how things have changed. Like, you know, someone could debate me on gender theory and I at least understand what they're saying in terms of like, you know, the philosophical concept of gender. What do we mean by that? A boomer will just go... Nah, there's two genders, you know, male, female, read biology textbook, like very simple, like you could never get that into their head. They just won't accept it, right? So there's good and bad things to the boomers. Um, I don't know where I would say they, they rank because like on the net, sure, they're positive for us electorally, but then, you know, they also blew it. They blew it. So, ah, oh, they blew it. It could have been so great. I could have had a normal life. We all could have had a normal life. Now we're all going to be in jail. We're going to be murdered in the next seven years. I'm going to be so mad if I get assassinated. Anyways. We continue. I feel like the next generation will be very conservative. Eh. Maybe more conservative, but by supermajority, definitely still left-leaning. Um, John, have you read Revolution from the Middle by Sam Francis? No, I've not. I've read, um, what is it, Beautiful Losers and uh, Leviathan and its enemies. At least you'll be with Jesus, true. True? Well, hopefully. We'll see. Uh, when is your next debate? I don't know. I don't know. Whenever I am, uh, whenever I am called, I suppose. Thoughts on the debt thing? Yeah, dude, it is so easy to balance the budget. And it sounds silly because we've been taught to believe that like politics is this really complicated thing that only the elites and experts know how to do. That's not true. That is not true at all. You could balance the, the problem is there is so much waste. There is an incredible like if you knew how much money the government just pissed through in terms of relative and absolute value, you know, taking into account things like inflation, it is insane. That's why I'm not principally opposed to taxes. I'm not like one of these taxation is theft guys. I am, but I'm also not. I understand the principle of it. My biggest problem with taxes is paying into it knowing that it's just getting pissed away for just nothing. Yeah, and, and that's because they want you to be debt slaves. That's why they do it too. It's not that they're just like, oh, we just can't figure out how to not spend millions of dollars finding out you know, if lizards have more sex when they listen to high frequency sound. They are doing it to make you a debt slave. Doyle for king. I would be the nicest king ever. People, I, everything, would, I'm not saying maybe, I, there are a lot of people I know who could do it, but I think I'd be a great king because I know a lot of really smart people who I would just have as my advisors. We could knock this out in an afternoon. We really could. Uh, you work a nine to five that you don't even like. We aren't the same, buddy. 
That's not true. Uh, John, you're looking very optical today. Well, you know, we're dressed up for the fall. We've got, we've got our boots and everything. We're ready to go. So thank you. I appreciate that. Participating in the fall trends is actually good optics. Very few will take this into account, but it is true. Um, wages in chat, so true. Make Doyle king. I don't know how to achieve that politically. You know, sometimes I get, like, really frustrated and I'll just Google, like, how the right plans to restore monarchy to try and, like, read some plan that, like, some liberals, like, being schizophrenic about. And then I try to, like, take notes and see if it's actually, like, a viable strategy. Is the country beyond a point of no return? I don't think so. Every trend would probably suggest yes. I think there's a few more things that, that need to be X'd off. Uh, I would say that by 2030, though, we'll, we'll probably know for sure. To the point where even... Because there are still a few things, but like, but what about this that I think, you know, could work? But, um, I don't know. Uh, get, up, get your pumpkin patch, GF. So true. A video on the globalists. Uh, I don't know what that would... That would just, you know, globalism explain. I don't know. Um, maybe. How can we stop the U.S. from being Australia right now? Um, keep, well, it's like I said in the video, you know, keep your Bible and keep your rifle by your side. That's the problem in Australia. They gave up God and they gave up their guns. Um, tell my GF pumpkin spice doesn't make me gay. It doesn't. It literally doesn't. That's a cope. It's literally a cope. Um, is death penalty a viable consequence for abortion? Yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't be. Uh, was Adeline a psyop? Why do these things resurface? Uh, when will you run for president? Do, and deal with checks and balances? Are you kidding me? That sounds uneventful. John, are you vaccinated? No. No, no, thank you. I would die on that hill, unironically. And a lot of people, you know, I would die on that hill, but then push comes to shove, they don't want to. I'm in a very fortunate position because my job doesn't require me to get it. If anything, my job requires me to not get it. Um, and then my family dynamic is, well, I live by myself. But I don't know. I've had a lot of guys who their families just, you know, you have to get the vaccine and they're adults and they get the vaccine. I'm like, why? What? Like when you sit down in there, you're an adult. Just tell the nurse, I don't consent to this. I don't want to get the vaccine. And she'll go, oh, OK. And then she won't give it to you. I don't understand this thing where like you're living with your parents and they make you get the vaccine. Like, I don't really understand that. Um, I don't understand how they make you or, you know, it is their house, though. So if they say you can't live here if you don't get the vaccine okay, who cares? Live it with a friend or something, you know, get an apartment. Apartments are cheap. Not in San Francisco and New York. You know, everyone wants to live there and the liberals are like, I can't live in San Francisco while working at Starbucks. But like, I don't know. Uh, Alex Jones told me when I had dinner with him the other night that the vaccine and Alex Jones doesn't miss on the big issues. I haven't looked into this enough because I can't really talk about it on YouTube. Um, I just know that I'm not going to get the vaccine. So I just, I haven't done any of my own real research into like what it is. I've heard a lot of different things from a lot of smart people, but Alex Jones told me the other night that basically total immune system compromise is inevitable and that longevity is uh, unlikely. Get the vax, pussy. <laughs> no. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see where you're at in four years antagonizing me. Yeah. I'm going to screenshot that. I'm going to read it at your funeral. Tick tock, tick tock. It's the final countdown. You chose to get the jab. You chose to get the mark of the beast, and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. Maybe you. Maybe you should have been a little bit more attentive to us anti-vaxxers. Nuance, bro. Maybe you should have had a little bit more nuance there in your take, right? <laughs> he said, "Bet." Um, you have a nine to five. I do not. I have like a, like an eight to eight. Maybe like a. I don't know. It depends on the day. It's Friday, though, so we're just taking a little break. Um, will vaccine kill off libs? I don't know. I, I'm conflicted on that. I don't want to talk about that. Mm, yeah. It's not the mark of the beast, but it's a warm-up. It's not not the mark of the beast. If you have a better idea, I'm completely open to it, but it's not not the mark of the beast. Are you completely anti-vax or just the COVID vax? Um, just the COVID vax, but then watching everybody react to it and get so like spurred out about it. And now I think I'm going to additionally be anti-vax on general principle, um, just because I like the reaction that it elicits from people. <laughs> um, do you like video games? Sure. Uh, tell us what Alex said about the vax. I think I did. Uh, thoughts on Christian girl autumn. It's a psyop. It's a psyop. 
Christian Girl Autumn is just sort of like the seasonal acknowledgement of this whole like trad GF phenomenon. And I'm, I guess I, you know, I'm, I am pro the concept of Christian women, you know, allowing themselves to, I guess, have like a little fall thing. Maybe they organize some book clubs, some get togethers, whatever. But this idea that like any slut can put on a turtleneck and some jeans and some like boots and then go get like a, a coffee and a, and a donut. And then I, it's Christian Girl Autumn. No, no. The problem is there's no way to vet that, right? White boy summer, I can see. I can see if you get to participate. Christian girl autumn, it's, it's, it's much more, uh, I guess, intricate than that. Because, I mean, of course, we're not in the position to evaluate, you know, whether or not uh, she really walks with God. That's not what we're called to do. However, if it's going to be like a cultural trend, like, haha, Christian girl autumn, you know, Participating in Christian Girl Autumn doesn't literally mean that you are Christian in the autumn season. It's, it's an identity, right? It's like a thing, you know? You're wearing the clothes. It's a meme. And I take meme identity very seriously. And so I don't know. I don't know if I can endorse that. Uh, what the hell is a trad GF? See, the fact that you don't know that is actually good. As a woman, if you don't know what a trad GF is, that actually is, is in your favor. That gives you more points. Because any, I would argue that any woman who is really fixated on the, the identity of a trad GF as defined by the internet is not really going to be a trad GF. It's like, it's just a LARP. It's a caricature of like what an actually traditional feminine woman would aspire to be. Um, Han Solo season, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm fully vaccinated and full of regret. F. Uh, best president from 1950 to 2000. Ooh, probably Nixon. Uh, Doyle has mastered walking on eggshells. It's true. The, the soles of my feet are calloused. Um, Bill Burr made a comment about um, how stupid the vaccines are killing people theory is because all the obedient sheep are taking it, not the revolters. Why keep the ones who don't comply? Well, it depends on, on what you think their ultimate goal is. Uh, if it's population reduction in general, that checks out. Um, they could also very easily blame it on, oh, the reason these people are dying despite getting the vaccine that was supposed to keep them alive uh, because they were infected by people who didn't get the vaccine but had the virus and didn't die is because they didn't get the vaccine. So they could literally sell the population on the idea that the reason so many people are all of a sudden dying is because of unvaccinated people not getting the vaccine. And people would buy it. And you could turn the public ire against the non-vaccinated people very easily. Um, every girl I've ever seen that talks about being trad usually has some hoe history or drug abuse. It's so true. It's literally so true. And that, what they're trying to do is basically... Uh, they're trying to use you as uh oh what's the analogy i want to use remember that scene in spider-man 2 when peter parker is trying to deliver pizza in uh 42 city blocks in eight and one half minutes or his ass is fired and he's going and then he decides to just go spider-man mode and then he sees the kids running out in front of the truck chasing the ball, of course, and then he swoops down and gets him. The ball is validation, right? The children are the woman. The truck is the wall, okay? So what's happening is these women for their 20s have been chasing the validation ball, right? They've been riding the carousel, having casual sex with who knows how many men because it validates them. And then, all of a sudden, the wall starts approaching, right? They're going to hit the wall. That supply is going to dry up. All their friends are getting married. They're having kids. They're going to be relegated to the cat life, right? The single mom, or not even single mom, just single working woman with many cats. That's the wall. You are Spider-Man. And so you are swooping down to stop them from hitting the wall. That's what you have to avoid. Don't save them. Don't be a hero. It's literally, that movie is so right wing. What does Peter Parker do? He stops being Spider-Man in that movie. What did he mean by this? The point being that women are going to try to use this identity uh, to, you know, and maybe they're, maybe they're right. Maybe they have seen the errors of their ways. Maybe they are really trying to live a moral and pious and, and, and modest lifestyle now. That's great. That being said, if that's coming out of left field after a decade or so of just being a whore, and now they've got the fluoride stare. Uh, I don't know if you really can, you know, 
Trust that. I think you might want to take yourself elsewhere if you really are a good man. You know, maybe she's great. Maybe she really is honest. But as a general rule, I would say uh, try to avoid it. That was a really good analogy, wasn't it? (laughs) So true. Bros literally just refused the vax. True. Thanks, John. I'm Spider-Man. Yeah, right. Right. You and your Instagram models. Um, how was the kiss with Alex Jones after a romantic dinner? Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Um, he's literally describing, uh, I, <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but it's, it's true. That's what it is. And you know, that's why also for the Christian guys out there who are looking for a, a Christian woman, I would say this, and I, I don't believe that I don't want to use damaged goods because I think that's not nice. Um, and I think that women can, you know, correct the errors in their past. But I tend to sympathize with the boys a little bit more. So I will say this. Um, if you're with a woman and you are trying to have a, um, I guess, a Christ-like relationship, you're trying to be abstinent, right? And she has maintained her, her virginity. She's still, you know, a virgin. She's still living a modest lifestyle, whatever. I would say that that's, like, great. That's, like, ideal. However... If you're dating a girl who claims to be trad and Christian and she wants to be abstinent with you specifically, but she has a body count of, let's say, five prior to you, you kind of are getting a a raw deal there, in my opinion. I understand that you shouldn't be having sex with her anyways because that's sinful outside the context of marriage. I understand that. However, that, I don't know. You kind of have to wonder, like, you know, she...